Hello and welcome back to another episode of Project Supercar, the channel where I've built my own DIY supercar using an old Audi estate I only paid £300 for. Now on this episode we're going to go over the most difficult part to design on your DIY supercar and of course that would be the bulkhead. Eh? Now before we go into the bulkhead, I hope you can hear me, it's raining quite heavily here in the UK and uh, I'm hoping it's not going to mess up the sound. Fingers crossed this, uh, this is recorded okay, because I don't fancy doing it again. Anyway, the bulkhead. Now this is the most difficult area to design on your supercar. Now it's not quite so much the bulkhead itself, but all the parts, the mechanical parts, that go around the bulkhead, which are parts like the steering rack, steering column, you've got the suspension, you've got the turning circle of the, uh, the wheels and tyres, this sort of thing, pedals, heater unit, windscreen wiper, motor, all this. Now all these things have to work together without interfering with each other, if that makes sense. So this is the area that you really want to concentrate on if you're going to design your own car. You want to start here and then work backwards and to the front of the car. So if you're going to design your own DIY supercar and you're going to start with the bulkhead, where do you begin? Well, that would be the road height of the vehicle. Okay, that doesn't quite make much sense to you. So I think what we'll need is a diagram and I think we'll get some help from Science Guy. Hello, I'm Science Guy. Now I've added something to the workshop, this whiteboard here, so hopefully we can get some nice diagrams drawn. Now, when this was delivered, it's, um, it turned up battered and bruised, so all the corners were bent and dented and all this sort of stuff. So I think this is how my whiteboard was delivered. Oh my god! Disturbing cell phone video shows packages flying out of a United States Postal Service truck, outrageously being flung and dropped to the pavement by the postal delivery man inside, to the abject disbelief of the person videotaping it all. Oh my god! Are you kidding me? Anyway, it's here, it's on the wall, so let me show you why you have to start at the bulkhead of your DIY supercar build. And here we have a drawing of the front suspension on my DIY supercar. Now this here is the wheel, cross-sectional. These are the tyres. This is looking head-on to the wheel. You have the hub carrier here, or the spindle as it's referred to in America. Now you have a lower control arm or wishbone, here is the chassis and this is the steering set up with the steering wheel. I hope we can all make that out. So when you're designing your DIY supercar, why do you need to start at the bulkhead? Or actually you need to start at the ground clearance of your DIY supercar. Now let me explain. When you're setting up your front suspension, what you need is to set up the lower control arm or lower wishbone. It has to be parallel with the ground when the car is at rest or traveling in a frontward direction. This in turn has to be parallel to your steering arm. Now, on my car, I have a central point steering rack. So this is the steering rack, this is the steering column, and this is the center point. So the steering arm and the steering control, or sorry, sorry, the lower control arm are power. Now, once you set this up, you need to figure out the ride height of your car. 
Now, what I would suggest is you don't use the tyre, because the tyre can deflect and it can be flat and that sort of thing, you have different tyres. So it's not a very good place to start a datum. So you really do need to start your datum about here. That is where the rim of your wheel is. So once you've set this up, I'll just extend this a little bit. You will know this distance. So that is really your ground clearance for your car minus the tyre. Now once you've got all this set up and you can do some calculations. So you know this distance here, you set your control arm to be parallel. This in turn will set the height of the steering arm here. Make a uh, decision, do you want to put your steering ball joint on top or below this spindle or hook carrier? This has, to, this has to all be worked out before you even start building your car. So, this parallel steering arm puts the steering rack in the correct position. So I'm hoping you can see that all these are pretty much fixed. Then you've got the coupler here, and then you've got the steering column itself. Now again, this is fixed. If you're taking it all from the same donor car, these are all fixed managed measurements. This then places your steering wheel. Once you've got all this placed, this places your dashboard. And then when you know the location of your dashboard, you can calculate where the windscreen is going to go. Now, I hope that all makes sense. Thanks, science guy. Hopefully that gives you some idea of what's involved in designing your bulkhead area. Now, before you start designing your car and the bodywork and that sort of thing, you really do need to consider what parts you're going to use. Are you going to use the steering and the um, spindle from the donor car or are you going to source it from another vehicle? You need to know all your parts ahead of time before you can do your styling. So, that was a two-dimensional drawing, but this area is three-dimensional. You have to make all these parts fit together. The steering, steering column, and all this sort of thing. Once all this has been put together, this gives you the height of the dashboard, which is where the windscreen needs to meet. Now, if you've done your body styling first, and you've placed your windscreen two inches lower than you should have done, none of this is going to fit. So what you're going to have to do is spend a lot more money and time in fabricating more custom suspension parts. And you'll, you'll end up sort of engineering yourself into a corner which will become very expensive. So, with a lot of forward planning and measuring, I managed to get the bulkhead at the correct height so it would match the roof. Now, this roof comes from a second donor car and we'll go into that in another episode. We'll, I'll, I'll do an episode just on how to do your roof of your DIY supercar. But the problem I had is I didn't have space to have two donor cars. So I had to have one donor car, build the chassis, get rid of the scrap donor car, my first donor car, bring in the second donor car and hope that my measurements worked so when I put the roof on it all lined up and it did. Now this bulkhead is from a Audi A6 C4 and you should know that if you've been following along. Unfortunately I don't really have much video or footage or photos of me cutting this bulkhead out of the first donor car and I just wanted to show you some details of that. So I've managed to find a video on YouTube where someone is actually pulling the dashboard out of an Audi A6 or an Audi 100 I believe at C4. 
we're going to try to pull the dash out of this thing. Uh, the heater core is broken, got a hole in it, and it was leaking all over. And Okay, well it's out. That was easy. <laughs> Let me just say, I will never do this again. That hole right there looks right inside the dash of the through the dash into the interior of the vehicle. This big mess down here is the actual heater box. It contains a fan and uh, the heater core. Let me just show you what happened to the heater core here. This is why we're having to do this. These pieces right here broke off. That's where the hose attaches. And this is some sort of composite material. Uh, the rest of the heater core is actually uh, aluminum. This used to be our dash and we had to completely disassemble the dash, pulling just the top off. I don't know who told that guy, one of my subscribers, that that's all you had to do, but I'll tell you what, if this is what's called just pulling the top off, then uh, I, I don't know what else you need to do to pull the rest of this out, but this entire dash is removed now. All to get out, there was a screw over in that corner and one in this corner and these connectors. Once you got those two screws out, you were able to pull that entire assembly out that holds the heater core and the uh, the fan. But as you can see, everything is out. Everything. Uh, we even had to take the steering wheel off uh, just enough to pull this dash out so that I could uh, get back in here and get those screws out. But this was a major, major job and uh, I myself will be totally amazed if this ever runs again. <laughs> so I think it's time we take a closer look at this bulkhead and to get to the bulkhead I'm going to have to remove the blower unit and to remove the blower unit I have to remove the strut brace and to do that I'm going to have to remove this seat belt. Now this isn't part of the final design, this is temporary because this bonnet is like three times heavier than the final fiberglass version will be. So this is just temporary for mock-up on the prototype. Now, that's not going to work. Okay, this isn't going to plan. This is where I really could do with an extra pair of hands. I could do with someone holding this uh, bonnet so it doesn't fall all the way forward so I can get the blower unit out. Bear with me, I'm going to have to think of something. I hope this holds a sort of J-rigged a uh, bit of rope from my hoist to the uh, to the bonnet there. Fingers crossed. Right, let's undo these bolts. Just a uh, 19mm.
Hello, it's me from the future, and yes, I've done it again. I've made this episode way too long. So I'm going to end it here, and I'll do a part two, which will be uploaded tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow and find out if I actually get this blower unit pulled out of the prototype, or have I forgotten something? Hmm.